Hey guys, thank you. Francois Small for some of those that knows me. Um, I'm about to install a light kit from RC four wheel drive onto my Galande two uh, cruiser body set. Um, light kit is simple light kit. It uh, it's actually they call it light kit, but uh, it doesn't have a box, a control box for it. Uh, so it's just a basic light kit. Uh, actually meant for this body and it's from RC four wheel drive. I'll look over my glasses and getting old. Um, it's the uh, LED basic lighting system for cruiser body set part number Z E 71 So uh, for anybody that wants to know on my YouTube the YouTube channel. Sometimes I do these RC Talk Live, and you can actually join in and chit chat with me um, about RC or pretty much anything you want to talk about. But I like keeping it RC related. And uh, real quick, I'll put the link into the de description uh, of the YouTube channel. Do 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 do. So, in the comments where you can ask questions, I just put a link for you to actually click on it and actually join in and chit chat. And I'll try to keep an eye out uh, on that particular window to see if there's any question that you can type. So if you, you're too shy, you don't want to join in, um, you can actually type in your question and uh, hopefully uh, I'll be able to see it. If you join in live and you don't have a microphone, um, you can still chat. There's a group chat in here also. So it gets confusing after a while, but it's not that bad. So, one thing I find very weird and odd about this uh, truck is that the body pins for to removing this body off of it are actually pointing up. So when you remove these pins, you actually have to remove them with a pair of pliers. But when you put them back in, it's very kind of hard to put back in. Uh, so I've taken them out previously to actually make things a little quicker. Come out of there. So I'll show you real quick. Not sure where to put my body. Let's put it side on this side. And I'll just change camera real quick. Um, here is the body pins. So there's one here, one here, and they're actually pointing up. So when you actually put the body back on, uh, you have a big bar that drops on top of it. So you cannot see where the hole is. So you f physically have to pretty much guess where it is to actually put it back in there. So it, it's kind of weird and odd. Um, of way of doing it. Now this light kit has a couple little different things in it. Let me change camera again. This light kit had a, has a bunch of different lights and they're, they are different colors. Uh, they actually have little carriers also. I'll just put that aside for now. Uh, and it just connects to your um, your box, your uh, receiver box, and it gets power from the receiver box. And it has a quick disconnect, and it's all pre-wired. So here's some wires that goes all the way up to the front, all in one shot. And I guess they made the rear so it can actually disconnect. Because the connection box is at the back of the truck. That's where the receiver is. 
Uh, these lights are for the rear. All the short ones are for the rear. And then these are for the front. Problem is, they're different colors. How do we know where they go? We have to put a battery, turn on the truck, and actually find out where they are or where they go. So let me open this up real quick and let me point down. Jose Fernandez, hello, hey, hey, hello, bonjour. Bonjour, monsieur. Comment ça va? And with a name like Francois Simard, yes, I do speak French. French is my uh, native language. And in Canada, there's a lot of people that are bilingual that can speak French and English. Hey, Cappy. Are you going to be able to join in? Yeah, screws might work also, but um, I guess you could because there are screws underneath it holding this pin. Um, let me switch back to that other camera. Uh, yes, these pins do have um, a screw here, but then I'd have to figure out on the body how to actually line it up. So basically, when you set the body on it, it lines up on this and it sits on it. It's a little bit cumbersome, and I find, like, I, I don't know how it's going to handle when I go on the trail, but when I go on the trail, I'm going to have to be careful of when I change the batteries or something. If I lean this upside down on the trail, it might get wrecked with rocks or whatever. So I'm going to have to be careful how I handle that. So let me open that up. Uh, let me connect the lights. I'll put the camera there. So basically, it does have a receiver box at the back. And now I'm just going to connect this under the receiver box where it says battery. You can basically connect it on any channels that's free. Uh, it will um... uh -huh. so what they've got is they do have a little tab here they do have a little tab that i'm gonna have to cut because my receiver box does not have that but i do have some straight cutters and i'll cut that up if you guys want to join in there is a link like that you won't have to just hear my voice you can Hear other people. It's been a long time I haven't uh, hosted one of these. Some of you guys enjoy it, so I enjoy having a chit chat with you guys also. Okay. I'll switch camera again. Sorry if you don't see me on my face, but I want to concentrate on the truck. So I'm switching from that camera to this camera. So I need a small little battery. And now things are going to blow up. Not. Okay, so the two small ones here are red. The rear or probably the side ones are very small little leds uh i think they're smaller than three millimeters they're probably 1.5 or two millimeters these uh, i got two five millimeters which are red and uh two three millimeter which are yellow
And for the front, I have again some for probably the side there, the 2.2 millimeter yellow, two yellow ones and two white ones. So pretty simple. And once I put the receiver box in, it does have a quick disconnect to disconnect the whole wire kit. So let me put that back on and I'll switch camera. Like that, you guys don't have to see my big stomach in the way. And I'll just disconnect the battery. I don't need it anymore. It is kind of a short cable. I guess I could flip my receiver box on the other side. I think that's going to make my cable a little longer. That means it's going to make my antenna shorter. I still have to put a little piece of foam here or something to stop it from water getting in. One good little thing is uh, this type of foam. Um, it does stop a little bit of water. It shouldn't come in. But what I'm going to do is um, when you have a little receiver box, you always have that little groove inside that actually goes down. So I'm going to make a little piece of plastic uh, to actually cover that hole. And when the, the cable squish this, it should make a nice little seal. And I usually put plastic dip also. It helps it. But time of this video, I won't do this for today. I'm just lazy that way. But hopefully I'll remember when I take this truck out and not go in the water with it too deep. Or else I'm gonna blow something. But it's just a receiver box. The one from Fl Fly Sky are pretty, uh, pretty cheap. You're looking at about ten bucks, I think. Yeah, these boxes are not that waterproof and that tight. So what you, I usually end up doing uh, at the back, uh, because I can actually, just hold on, I can actually pull it open just a little bit. And there is, so what I usually do is I put Plasti Dip all the way around it. And Plasti Dip is pretty cool. Uh, or uh, what I call... What I call mine is uh, electrical tape, but it's liquid. It's actually liquid electrical tape. So this is waterproof um, and once it dries, it dries up. But basically what it is, it's like rubber, but very liquid. And then you just paint it on where you want it. I like this better than Plasti Dip, um, just because this is actually meant for electrical. Uh, I use it on my batteries sometime if uh, a battery actually is cracked uh, or the case is used or there's uh, people put um, just regular electrical tape. Instead, I put this. This really seals up everything. And you can find that at your auto store in the place where they sell automotive stuff. That said, let's get rid of this. I don't need that anymore because the body goes on the other one. Yeah, RC Media Network by Cappy Tile says, um, yeah, water is a dangerous game in this RC world. Yes, it is.
Yes, you can put the, uh, he says in his monster beetle, he just put the receiver in a bottle lid and filled the whole thing up with the hot glue. Yeah, you can do that. The problem is, is once if you want to repair anything, you're kind of screwed because it's all full of hot glue. Uh, but hot glue, what's nice with it, it actually comes back apart. Uh, here are the two parts that actually, the, the metal frame, where the, the pins actually go. So when you actually try to put your uh, body back on, I actually have to take the pin and then put my pin under under it, which on top, and actually put the pin there. And it's like that on both sides. Uh, if anybody does these, it's always better to do it, to do the lighting as you're doing it, because now I have to take everything apart, which means I have to take uh, the whole, let me back up the camera. I have to take everything apart. So it makes it kind of difficult and I'm doing the job twice. But that's because I wasn't thinking of doing a light kit but then uh, I was doing uh, trying to do some videos, but I wasn't happy with the uh, I wasn't happy with the turnout of how the video looked without the lights and all that. So I said, "I'll oh, screw that." So I stopped making the videos and said, "I might as well keep uh, get the light kit. It wasn't that expensive." So I have to unscrew everything now. So bear with me, and I'll get that going. And it seems like I forgot to pronounce your name. Well, it's my French thing, eh? When I pronounce and I see uh, a name, so it's T H I L E. Tile? Tile? Teal? Tile? Teal? I'm not sure. I just butchered it. I'll just call you Cappy. It's a heck of a lot easier. Uh, one thing is these uh, chats do not show up after the video is actually published. So once we publish the video, all these chats, the live chat is actually gone. So I'm taking the front screws off. And since we're live, I cannot fast forward this. Out of there. So on my table, I'm keeping a, a little um, that's the hand, um, a little hand towel, shop towel. They call it, and that's too, so I don't get things dirty. So I'm trying to remember where the other screws are that holds on this body. I think they're the back ones. I hope I don't have to take my rails off. You know, Cappy, if you joined in live again, you could, uh, Tell me how to pronounce your name. I finished this body this summer and it's still, not sure if it's still dried, but it, it seems to be uh, taking a long time to dry. Maybe I should look at my instruction on which screws I should take off to take the body off. I'll try to remember by heart. So when I decided the color, I like red, but when I decided the color, it was either doing this, a body that is weathered because they don't have new ones like this anymore. 
uh, you can't buy them new so everybody's doing weathered look and everybody's doing uh so i decided to do a restored look so basically it's a restored rc oh i think i see where the screw is and i think i've taken off the wrong ones and yes it'd probably be faster if i use a drill but this is plastic and I don't want to wreck it. So Cappy says to give him a little bit of time and he'll be on. I did send some message, but this is a last minute thing I wanted to do tonight. And I decided to, oh, what the heck? I might as well do this live. Some people might enjoy it. Some people might not. But uh, if you don't, tune in to a different channel now. This screw is being temperamental. She doesn't want to come out. Come out wherever you are. Got it. There we go. Loose there. And the reason I have to take this off is because some of the lights at the side are actually. behind the body and just like I figured I might have to take the side panels off the sliders off that should be okay there we go here's my interior I wanted to do more of a restored look and nice and shiny and so I think it turned out pretty good especially where the steering wheel is and I even put the leather wrapped uh, knobs for the steering uh, gas pedal are all painted at the bottom I did find a guy for it I don't know where it went so let me screw on the two back pieces back on the two screws I took off for nothing. I gotta get myself a moderator to look at questions and thanks Cappy. He says the interior looks good. Cappy, you're getting older. Uh, when I used to first be around and when you used to come on the videos, I used to do this a little earlier. And then you had to go to bed because you had school the next day, which is normal when you're a little younger. So uh, it's nice to have you along and uh, for you to be able to tag along and grow with us. Me, I'm just getting old and I've been under the weather and feeling bad and being sick and being sick and tired of being sick so here we go so i put the two screws the two screws i took off was for these two but you actually have four screws to take off the body so two, uh, two at the front and actually two on the side here to take off the body but it probably would have been better if i took the side rails off but
Now I just noticed that's why they had another disconnect at the back of the truck. Is because there's lights here. So hopefully these are not going to be too hard to put in. And there's no instruction for these. So these little carriers for the uh, lights, not sure where they go yet, but I'll find out. Cappy says, it's indeed a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So it might be easier for me to take the bumper off. Because it looks like I've got to take some screws off the back. So off with your head. So Dave from Radio Control Patrol uh, is the one that actually built the chassis built the whole truck and then he gave up on it and um, he told me it's not his thing and he didn't want to continue it anymore so I actually bought the kit off of him so uh, and then once I bought the kit then it sat on my shelf for a little bit sure put a lot of Loctite on that because they're tough to take out. That's funny how short these screws are. I don't know if that's the right screw that was put in there originally, but man, they sure don't stub out a lot. So basically these have um, little slots to put the lights on. So I have to unscrew these little tiny screws. And then I have to take the one that actually comes off of it. And it should only be, yes. So, this connects to my other wire so when i disconnect the truck i'm going to have to disconnect two wires no matter what i still got to disconnect two wires i was thinking of putting this one there and then so on but that won't work so that said so the big one, the five millimeter millimeter goes here and the three millimeters go there. Doesn't matter which one, because there's no signal lights on this. There's no uh, control box. Let me see real quick. Uh, sorry for the wait. Let me see if there's messages on my Facebook or anywhere else. Nope. Okay. So all good. Let me come back to our talk live so I can see the question and put my window up. It's like a big production studio on my uh, computer. And these weren't basically painted. He left them white. Um, I'm probably going to paint them. 
Oh, I thought they were glued, but I guess they're not. They're just screwed on from the back. Man, these are small screws. I've already got scratches on it from the last time I went out in the trail. So, where is my paint? There's my red one. So I have clear red paint, that's for the lights, and clear yellow. Just debating if I put orange instead of yellow. Were these very yellow or very orange? Let me turn it back on and find out. What to do with my battery? Sitting under a truck. Or a body truck. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty yellow to me. So there's two reds, and the other two are pretty much yellow. So yellow and red it is. So what I'm going to do real quick, uh, just because I want it to look um, yellow or to look red, is I'm going to take a little bit of red and actually put it on the light. And I'd rather do that on the inside. It just shows up a little bit better. And like that, if you scratch it or put it in the water or weather, it just holds up a little bit. Now, this clear red paint is kind of cool in the sense that um, you just have to put a little bit and everything will look red but not too red bumper so i can take the other red light off and then i'll quickly do the the other one also. The hardest thing I find about these videos, especially when I do them alone, uh, is talking by myself. So you constantly have to explain what you're doing or else it gets boring for you guys. But it can also get boring hearing my voice all the time. So, let me paint the other one. There, both of them are painted. Now to put it back together.
I like RC four wheel drive. They do some nice stuff, and sometimes they're like it when you use their own stuff on their own stuff. It makes it so easier to work on and to modify stuff or do stuff. So it's just like Tamiya. Nice to work with. Now I got one light dead. I'll just connect that. I don't need that connected. And I'll plug this one also. Okay. My other red one. I still have no clue how I'm going to hide the cable yet under the bumper and so on. So I'll just figure something out as I go. This is what's fun about this hobby is figuring out things as you go. So take the big light and put it in the socket. Screwdriver. I don't know if your screwdrivers do, do like mine, but they have a tendency to walk away. You put a screwdriver down somewhere and then you look around and it's not there no more you walked away or hide underneath a sheet or a manual or it just doesn't stay at the same spot so basically this is you can see just a little bit of red. And that's how I like them. If I want more red, I'll just take it apart later and I'll just paint it. But it should, once it dries up, it should be just nice. And I'll take off these and I'll put them yellow. But before I do that, let me get a cup of water because this is water. So uh, just clean my brush. I was not planning on painting today. Okay. So my bumper with some nice pretty lights. One done, and on for the other one. My rat rod is getting fixed by Dave Martin from Radio Control Patrol. We've had it now for a year, uh, a good year, and um, it's still not done. Uh, mind you, it's not really his fault. Uh, he did get an accident last year. Uh, really stopped him uh, on a lot of lot of stuff. So he had to get uh, physio and get back into shape and all that. Uh, he actually got re-rented by a big transport truck. So uh, luckily, everybody 
is okay in a life, but it is kind of scary. Sometimes it's not you you got to worry about, but the other people on the road. But he is revamping and giving a facelift to my rat rod. Some of you know my rat rod. If you don't know my rat rod, well, Google the Tank RC rat rod and you should be able to find it. Or there is a playlist that I have um, that you can actually go have a look. And uh, you see the build. It's actually a, it used to be a summit, turned into a Revo, a mini Revo, uh, mini summit, turned into a mini Revo. And then um, I actually uh, took it apart. And uh, no, somebody else took it apart because it was all in pieces when I got it. I actually got that Revo as spare parts for my other Revo. So when I had it, it was just sitting there. I said, hey, I'm going to do something. So I started thinking about what I could do. And then I had a spare SCX10 axle kicking around. I said, I don't think this has been done, uh, which was put a fixed axle on the knee Revo. So independent suspension in the front and a fixed axle at the back, just like a twin hammer. But what I liked about this one, uh, the Revo, is that the um, um, the width was exactly the same as an SCX10. And by the time I put the axles on, it's 12 inch. So it turned out to be exactly like the SCX10. So to me, it was a bonus. I can put any body on that. I can do, it's like a Frankenstein. It, it's, it's really neat that I can shape it and do anything I want with it. It's kind of cool. I had it set up as a dragster, then just a regular rat rod, and then I ended up doing a rat crawler with it. And man, that thing is awesome crawling around. So awesome little crawler. So I put a little bit of yellow paint. And now for the yellow light. That's for you. I don't know how that happened, but I seem to have got some yellow, uh, red paint on my yellow light. Very weird. So let me take that off before it dries off. Oh, it probably ended up going in my lid when I was holding it. So my wife's going to like me doing this with my shirt. But hey, it's a work shirt. I get these for free. That's what happens when you have an open cam. An open lid just lying around. It's kind of weird. Pick up the lights and all of a sudden they're red. What the? What the heck is going on? So everybody here sleeping. Um, so if I'm not talking too loud, sorry about that. But I am trying to speak normal. But I also don't want to wake up everybody in the house. Little guy went trick-or-treating, got lots of candies. And he was actually dressed up as a Lego man. So it was a uh, police Lego man. It's kind of cool little costume, cost about 50 bucks. Um, Canadian, it's probably like 35 bucks US.
Uh, the link in the Hangout doesn't work. Oh, really? OK, let me try something. That happened last time also. I copied it for the first time. It didn't work. And then the second time it did. Control C, close. Let's try that again. Try this link. And see if that works. Be a good reason why nobody's getting on. Or maybe it's just because people are just tired. I'm trying to keep them, all the slots and all the things on the same direction. And we have Cappy is back on. Hey. Hey, Cappy. Yeah, my uh, my last name is actually pronounced Tealy. Tealy. Okay. I remember. Because it's uh, it's T H I E L E. Okay. Well, I'm sorry if I butchered it. Ah, uh, it's fine. It's just like me, my last name. A lot of people have problems saying it, especially when I call in the U.S., where it's like 100% uh, English and they barely speak any other language, and they, <laughs> they try to say my last name, which is Simard, S I M A R D, Simard, and they go Simard, Shimard, Shimard. Like they they have a hard time, or even saying my first name, Francois. Can you say that again? Like one time, I think I must have said it eight times in a row. Francois. And then I just tell her, my name is Frank. Just call me Frank. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, when I read your name, it, I read it as uh, Francis Simmered. Okay. So here I have red and yellow. Red and yellow. So it's a little bit better. So when I back up and I'm going to start taking pictures or whatever, when the lights are going to be off, at least it's going to be a nice little color. Yeah. So now I have to figure out because the fenders are there, lights are under it. I have to follow and come back up. So have you built any new RCs yet uh, lately, uh, Kathy? Well, uh, I'm still working on Die Hard, which I've got some crazy work that I've done on that. Cool. Here, I'll turn I, my camera on my phone. I have to I have to do so much catch up on everybody's thread and everybody's um, channels. It's ridiculous. So I'm putting new lock thread on the nuts so I can put the back bumper back on. There, let me present to you. Put you on present. Uh, that's in metal? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's metal, all of it. It's, for the most part, it's all steel. Um, I'm going to have to go over back here and sand off this because it's got a pain. It's got a coat of gray paint that I've got on there or really that was already on there. I'm basically going to go ahead and have it be a tow truck back here. Cool. Um, I scrapped the old die hard body and made a newer one that I could actually build an interior on the inside. And I 
I've basically got it bolted on right now. I'm also, I also added a, some panels right here for a cappy crawler. And I see the, the light bar on this, it, albeit it doesn't shine, it, it looks cool. Um, the bolt on here came on, on strip, so I welded that back on. I reinforced the front bumper and added some more welds. This came out, so I rewelded that. And uh, for the Monster Beetle, I'm actually doing a custom uh, independent suspension system for the rear, so that way the, uh, the dog bones don't keep coming out every time I hit a bump or something. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Now you've been busy and you've been, uh, your metal, metal work has been a heck of a lot better than uh, when you first got on. I re that's for sure. And that's just experience, which is kind of cool. And the more oh, yeah. you practice, the better you'll get. But it's nice having that old finish and it's not, it's, it looks, it looks going to look great. Yeah. It's right now. I haven't really done anything to it. I just bolted it on. Um, but once when I get the interior in and the roof on, then I'm going to start getting to work on how it's going to look. Okay. You're going to so, make it look like a Mad Max or you're going to try to do a nicer finish or what's, what are your thoughts? I'm gonna, on? I am going to go for the tip. I'm going to go for the Mad Max, um, but I'm going to make it look more like it was, mm, I'm going to make it look less beat up than, than before. So it's, it's still going to have yeah. dents and bings and everything. But basically, what I'm what I do plan on doing is I plan on giving it a nice. Uh, I see. I plan on sanding it down, giving it a coat of rust, then taking like a, a a thin coat of black, putting that over it, and then re rusting it again. Okay. And uh, I saw. Are you familiar with cyanide tube? Yeah. Yeah, that's what he does for his rat rod builds, and it gives it a nice rustic and black finish. So I decided to. I might as well try that as well. And, you know, now that I'm kind of looking at this, I might not even put a roof on this. No, it actually looks nice without a roof. Yeah. But yeah, that's all that. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. So I'm putting a couple of tie wraps at the back um, so that the lights uh, actually, uh, the cables don't get tangled in the rocks and come back out. You, you remember last year uh, when I purchased a whole bunch of RCs, uh, a cappy, uh, like there was a little uh, a Tamiya Beetle and there was another one, which is was a Mercedes Cabrio. Remember those? Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, I still they're still in the box. I haven't built <laughs> anything. I haven't done anything. There's just just sitting there. So those are going to be building soon. So uh, it's going to be cool when I start everything. You know, if you ever. Uh... If you ever considered taking a, a, a beetle body, uh, specifically the, uh, the beetle body that Tamiya provides in all of their uh, beetle kits, yeah. if you take that body, you cut off the back and you replace it with a wood deck, it makes a really nice uh, scaler. A really nice what? It, it, looks, it looks really good on a scaler. Okay. If you yeah. look on... Um, if you look on my community on my community right now on the uh on the picture on the community banner i that right there fried mm -hmm. actually sent me i'll go have a look at that later yeah it, it's it's so tempting just to take my monster beetle body and cut it in half <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometime but like me, what I'm, I'm kind of not happy with uh, the body is that they've made holes in it and I have to live with those holes. Um, I wish they would have uh, gave the option of, of not having the holes, in other words, 
and and I could use magnets instead to actually hold the body and how to have those stupid pinholes uh, going in the front of the body uh, in front of the hood because it's pre-drilled. Yeah, that is um, that is kind of annoying, but if you do think about it, it, it uh it takes it's going to see a lot of moving around and jumping and everything so i guess uh the body yeah, some, better some people might yeah but i'm building it as a um i'm going to be building it as a um uh herbie herbie the love bug mm. i got the stickers for it already and all that and uh this one guy I wanted to paint it to Herbie and he goes well he goes you can't get the off-white you can't get the paint off-white and there what do you mean you can't get the paint off-white so like I, what what I'm confused at is in body paint can't you mix the paint like they do with their spray guns can't they mix the paint and get an off-white like yeah you can get a recipe and just like mix the paint together and do experiment and try to do get it as close as possible he says the only paint i can get is pure white i can't get off white i go what the heck i, I i'm thinking he's just just didn't want to bother with it i don't know you know that's um that's really weird because i've uh you know for a time i was looking into getting a uh, an airbrush so you know i and i'm still uh into looking at the art and everything and how they do it but mm -hmm. i do know for a fact that you mix a lot of paint in those uh little bowls that they have on the top of the airbrush yep i'm trying to clean up the wires here as much as i can So are you all done for trick or treating, or you don't do that anymore with guys, or you don't go to parties for trick or treat? Well, um, I didn't do anything this year because no one really invited me. I didn't really ask around. Okay. Didn't feel like doing anything. Are you a city boy or a country boy? Kind of a suburb boy. Suburb, okay. I mean, personally, I'll take the country over the city any day. <laughs> what yeah, what nice. good is the air if you can taste it <laughs> yeah well your president says that there's nothing wrong with the air and the environment it's all uh it's all fake news there's nothing wrong with the environment there is mm. no global warming and that's where i do slightly disagree with him there <laughs> but i don't want to start po talking politics so yeah, I mean me neither so what i've done i've tied up the uh, i wish i i'm probably going to get some black tie wraps later but right now it's two white tie wraps on each side of the bumper that's holding it so it look better once i put black one but i don't want to have any small black ones right now so i use my white ones yeah those those white ones are cursing i swear yeah i'll get them changed and now, ah, these I think are probably for for the front lights, but there's already some in it. But they probably gave you some spare, give me some spare ones. It's the only thing I can think of. These small little side lights were a pain in the butt to install and these are pre-painted yellow yeah i bet those those don't look fun but they were a pain to screw on and especially in the front there's so much space uh, less not a lot of space to put your screwdriver and you have to do it on an angle and it's kind of weird what I find weird also with this light kit is the way it goes from the front to the rear, but where to hide the wire. There's not really a way to hide it and because you have to put the other body back on. So it's kind of tricky. 
but we'll get it done. So we'll start from the rear, work our way up. Especially these little tiny screws, when you first put them in, there's no thread in the plastic, and you physically have to press hard and try to get the threads in. Once you build your first kit, you'll know. Working with ready to runs and converting them is kind of cool, but working with a kit, that's that's fun. You know, I remember uh, building the Monster Beetle. Uh, it was about mm, 10, no, 9, 9 at, 9 at night, and my dad comes in. He says, hey, time to wrap it up. Go to bed. And I'm like, all right. Two hours later, I'm like, and just one more part. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I swear those to me, kids, you don't think they take a long time, but uh, on certain parts of them, they take forever. Yeah. And you, you just get so absorbed into them. It's crazy. Yeah, just like last night, I was working on my drifter. And uh, I got a Sakura, I can't even remember the model number of the Sakura I got, got it off a of buddy. But um, I was working on it and all of a sudden I look at the time and it's 1, 1 a.m. I said, oh man, I got to go to bed. <laughs> I uh, pretty much built the um, the majority of a trailer in one night. I ended up taking it apart though because I didn't have any way to build, uh, get axles for it. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, I started building a very long trailer for my toy hauler. I'll be in it. Dang. The trailer is five feet long, uh, a little over five feet long. What's gonna pull it? My toy hauler. Oh. Uh, I have a, um, it's a GCM racing cross canyon chassis with dual wheel, dual ease at the back. Um, and it's got a toy hauler trailer right now, but uh, I built another trailer, which is a, um, just Google car hauler. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different trailers. It's just a trailer that looks like a very long ramp. And at the end, it actually has another ramp that goes over the cab if you want but you can actually fit four cars onto it. So I actually measured if I put this one, if I put my Wraith and it, it's gonna fit, but I can actually put up to four, uh, different car, uh, four, four different cars on it easily. Maybe five, it all depends which uh, MO, MO3, MO5, which are the Mini, uh, Mini Cooper. Those are a little shorter wheelbase. That should be cool. Yeah, but I started building it, and then uh, I just gave up. Well, it's because I, like I was saying earlier, my health went down the hill a little bit this summer, but now it's catching up again. So uh, I mean, I'm feeling a little bit better. So I might do more this winter or finishing it up next summer. Yeah, that sucks. Another thing I want to try to do is a. Um, an RC, but a um, a hover a hovercraft. Ooh! But I want to do a military hovercraft. Ooh! So that I can put maybe uh, I started looking at plans already for it, but it's uh, because there's some uh, competitions here in in Canada and well, it was a G6. It's all over the world. And they have a competition called Float Your Boat. So people, they do all kind of boats for it. But I want to do a military a military one, but I'll be able to put maybe four uh, SCX-10 on it, or maybe even more. So Dang. I want to build something big. Getting a little ambitious, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Getting ambitious with my old age. I want to do all these projects, but I'm getting older and older. I better get it going soon. Yeah. 
And I've been watching a lot of robot wars with my little guy, and he likes it. And I told him, maybe we can build a robot. There we go, another build. <laughs> There, the rear installed. You know, I'm actually uh, planning for uh, basically another project, which is basically just a, a new body for um, the Alpha Storm, which is my SCX-10. Okay. And uh, I took apart the little Patriot Struggy body that I had on it because that was starting to get because, you know, it's aluminum, so it can only take so much before the parts start to loosen up and, you know, okay. metal. So I was like, you know what, I want to, I was thinking of what truck uh, body should I put on there? Should I do like a, like a, a muscle car that looks lifted or, you know, a, a classic, at, like a trophy truck or something? I was like, you know what, I'm going to put a Humvee on there. Cool. I am going to have to do something about the rear suspension, though, because on the SCX-10, that is literally the softest uh, side of the suspension because it's got the motor on the end. So mm -hmm. I've got to beef it up a little bit more. Just checking if there's any messages, but there's nothing. Yeah, my wife wasn't too keen on my color scheme for this body. She goes, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then I, when I finished it, she she goes, it, it it looked nice. It looks different, and it looked nice. And I like being different. Yeah, well, especially the tan, the tan roof with their dark red. I think it's just like it makes it sexy. Oh yeah. It, it reminds me a lot of um, the more classic look to it, or like a mm -hmm. classic truck. Because you, you really don't see a lot of, um, you know, reds like that paired up with tans and such. Yeah. Well, this is a, uh, I did pick a Toyota red. This is actually uh, car paint. Yeah. And it's actually uh, from Toyota, the, this paint. So I kind of kept it original. In other words, Toyota. Hmm. There's so many great builds that people come up with or do with these things it's just crazy some some people really have a lot of skills in making it look old or chopping up or making the hood open and uh, making the doors open like this is a hard body that basically they basically cut out uh, with piano wire or even just an exacto you just take an exacto and you go over and over and over until you go through the body it's just time consuming, but it's just crazy what some people do. Ten forty, a little bit over an hour doing these lights. They're they're everything in this hobby is unbelievably time consuming. Do this or like that's one thing my wife I don't think I understands is this hobby has taken me off of watching TV. And this oh, hobby yeah. has taken my ass off the couch and going outside on a weekend or doing stuff. See, my parents used to complain about why can't I be a normal kid with a normal hobby? But I think they I think they realized that you know an Xbox and a PS4 or 3 whatever and 
all these games and phones and everything, yep. it, it costs so much more than this. Oh, yes. At the end, yes. Yeah. It, this seems expensive. It does. Um, I have ways of working around that, fortunately, because I I love to make my own parts and wherever I can. And, you know, if someone, if a friend's ever, you know, like, here, have a part, and I'll be like, here, have one of my parts. So, you know, it, it can be cheaper. But, you know, if you look at all the all the modern hobbies when it comes to, like, video games and such, there there's not really a way to go around that. Nope. Not so legally, just like, my, just like my son, he wants to buy an Xbox One. I told him, "Well, let's wait. The the new Xbox is coming out, which is going to be the Xbox uh, One X. Hmm. So, I might want to get that." And then he's been saving some money. We've sold a lot of his old toys and all that just just to pay up, and we got enough to buy one, but uh, an Xbox One. But like I told him, we got to buy games now. Because all the games we have for the PS3 don't fit on it. He goes, oh, that's okay. I go, no, it's not. Because every game costs you $80. That's freaking expensive at the end. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. Hey, my grill is loose. You know, one thing I am really excited about um, is I'm, I'm actually building a massive co uh, course in my backyard right now. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yeah, it's it's massive. Yeah, it's just like me. At the, I was at the hobby store, and they say, build one. Build, build a course at your house, and you'll see people are going to go. People are going to come. You build it, and they will come. Oh, yeah, I built it, and not a lot of people came. Some did. <laughs> Not as much as I would have liked. Well, this is like my fourth course yet, so cool. You know, I've I've got some experience under the belt, I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's YouTube. Oh yeah. I've got going so far. I've got two tunnels. I got a couple of rock sections. I've got grass going on. I'm gonna add a couple of bushes. I've got a of small tree uh, that I, I really didn't want the tree because I'm not, I'm going to be out of the house by the time it uh, gets big enough. Okay. So, yeah. I'm also going to include uh, a suspension bridge. Okay. For, so, you know, that, that'll be, uh, that'll look cool. Yeah, I got, I made one of those. Uh, it, well, it's a rope bridge right now that I have. It's kind of cool. People enjoy going on it. I don't like it because it's bouncy, but some people seem to like that. Because yeah, it's kind of cool because it bounces. Well, it really depends on what truck you're putting up there. <laughs> yeah. Because honestly, um, if I build a, like a, a show, like a trophy truck, like what you got going on now, I would never trust myself to put that on anything other than a, other than a flat surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been crazy. Uh, a lot of people have been looking at my. Uh, I got a video called "The Tank Goes Shopping," and it's about me with my. Um, razor buggy when i first got my razor buggy with the trailer yeah. and uh, uh, there's a lot of views on that on that videos lately and it's uh, it's it's doing well but it's 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 a fun car that razor buggy but it's actually off of a short course truck the body uh, the it used to be a short course truck and then they put a new bright razor buggy body on it so hmm a fun car makes it a little bit more tippy now that that body's on but you get used to it there's a couple guys already that offered me some money for it but nope it's as far as i know the only one around 
that I know. So no, it's not for sale. Yeah. Make a bunch of them and you can make some real money. <laughs> this is our C. You don't make money. <laughs> Just fun. Two more lights, then I have to figure out where I'm going to do with all my wiring. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Some of the things in this hobby are ridiculously expensive. Very expensive. Some stuff I find ridiculous is the price that some people are asking for their used stuff. Yeah, used stuff. Um... It's it's a yes and no. Because like, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, um, there's only so much wear and tear a vehicle can take before I'm not gonna drop a buck on it. Because mm -hmm. at some point it's not worth it. You know, my um my short course truck, I wouldn't I wouldn't sell that any to anyone, not because it's you know, not because it's mine, but because I wouldn't want to put that upon them. Mm -hmm. it's really a labor of love and it's the same thing about the monster beetle you know that truck it doesn't take much wear before it, you know you're spending a crap ton of money on it which is the one thing i don't like about that truck i really wish because i i am quite upset about this that i i thoroughly went through all the reviews and any and everything but nothing said anything about these problems that as soon as i bought it all of a sudden they started popping up okay uh, on the monster beetle Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, just a word of advice: don't spend, don't buy that truck unless you want to spend uh, another two hundred on it. Mm hmm. Because you're gonna, you're gonna drop sixty for the um, differential, and you're gonna drop like another hundred twenty on the uh, independent suspension kit. Which I'm not doing that independent suspension kit. Hmm. I'm I'm just straight up rednecking it right now. I don't care if it looks good or not. If it works, that's really what I'm going for right now. Okay. Which right now I'm kind of at that point where I'm looking at it. I'm like, is it really worth it? <laughs> hmm. Just wondering how the heck this light's going to work. So did you um, buy that light kit? Yeah, it's a light kit from RC Four Wheel Drive. Um, mm. I could have made my own, but like it was under twenty dollars, and I, I just figured, hey. So this basically a light, uh, no, uh, something from RC Four Wheel Drive that's under twenty dollars. Yeah, from RC Four Wheel Drive. You imagine that? <laughs> oh, it's not. That is a rarity. See, out of their their reputation holds up good, though. I'll give them that. Their reputation is pretty good. Um, re reliable, not easy to break, you know, that, that kind of stuff. But they're stupid expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of their stuff, yeah. I mean, granted, it, it looks really cool. Like uh, the the beast, they're six by six. Yep. It's it's probably one of the the only six by sixes that I actually consider buying off the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cross has some, but it's it's not the same thing. No, not the same. And you know, Banggood and all the other cheapo China sites. They've got one which is a generic one, and it, it kind of looks okay. I've, but honestly, I don't trust them enough to buy that. Mm -hmm. One thing I'm amazed at, though, is uh, definitely Red Cat. Because, I mean, they, the one thing I don't like about them is probably going to be their motors. 
Their motors aren't the best quality, neither are their servos. Past that, you know, pretty good quality. But I'm looking at the Catry crawler right here, and their crawlers actually have a phenomenal quality for their price. Mm -hmm. You know, if the for the Cappy crawler, the only the one thing that uh, really killed me, and it wasn't the servos or the differentials and in the, in the axles, because the differentials, I had to drop like fifty bucks on those, and but that wasn't. And yeah, their their servos for the for the RS ten or really for the RS series, which is the rock, uh, no, not the rock slide, sorry, the uh, Everest. The Everest crawlers, their differentials are crap because they're plastic and that's on rocks and plastic, okay. just the way they made them don't work. But once you get past that in the servo, you know, it's a pretty reliable truck. Just don't put it in any mud hmm. and, and definitely don't bog it down with any extra weight for the Everest. The, um, the rock slide though, is it's definitely a capable truck when it comes to weight. Cause you know, for crying out loud, I got a metal body on there. I had a I had a pound of of BBs in each wheels practic in which in each wheel practically at one point before I snapped a metal pin in there, but then I went in and put a uh, put a hardened steel pin in there, so that was good. Okay, yeah, they gave you these little tiny sleeve to put the lights on, but huh. one is a little shorter than the other one, so the stock one is the tall one. And the uh, new one is a shorter one, but what's different with it also is that the slot are, uh, there's a slot to pass the cable. It's a little bit bigger on the short one. And it's shorter because once you have the light in there, it, when you twist it, well, they need room for the heat shrink. So that's the reason why they give you a whole new set because I was running, why the heck they give me a set when I have one here? Hmm. But when I tried putting this into the old one, it just didn't want to go in the slot. And that's why I started pulling the other one out and looking at it and noticing, oh, it's actually shorter. And the hole inside seems to be bored a little bit, a little bit, big, a little bit bigger to uh, allow for the cable to actually turn while you're screwing it or whatever. So now I know why they give you some extra one. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, and these lights are actually six volts. So um, don't try to put it directly on the battery. Uh, you need to put it on the receiver. So for people that are trying to install this, don't plug it directly on the battery. I've seen a lot of people do crazy things, and that's basically one of them. Okay, now i got to screw that back on. Yeah, Red Cat has a couple new crawlers coming out. The Everest, there's an Everest Sport and an Everest, uh, uh, can't remember the name, but they look pretty good. They they got they're getting some good reviews from them from them from people. Yeah. So an Everest fourth scale. That's well, that's uh, pretty big. Mm. Have you heard of the uh, ECX Barrage? Yes. Yeah, that that looks like a good truck. 
it's um, it's a good price. Uh, the motor is a small motor uh, for the wheels and all that. It's a, it's not a 540 can. It's a smaller one. Mm. It's it's it's. <laughs> It's it's not bad, but you get what you pay for. So it's not an expensive truck, and so on. But uh, it's um, you get what you pay for. Uh, but the suspension also the 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 shocks are actually on the inside, so it is kind of easily tipped. And uh, there's there's some people that came out with mods to move them out, and so on. So there's a couple things that are weird with it, but fixable. Um, I know a guy that he actually showed me pictures so he goes uh, here here here's what my truck looks like now like he's taking the axles off because they're not as strong he's taking the transmission off he's taking everything off even the tires even the body he's taking everything off and he's replaced it with his CX10 part so <laughs> I go to him so the only thing you got left on your barrage that's original is the rail the chassis rail he goes yeah pretty much <laughs> why the heck did you buy that instead of just going out and just buying an SEX then? Strange. You know, I'm pretty sure that their uh, weird design is more than likely to part of, you know, patent laws and everything. No, they're just trying to get in the bandwagon uh, for everybody buying a scale truck and trying to make money out of it and I might do some noise here because I'm trying to stretch this into place. I'm trying not to catch the wires. To get it through, there we go. I'm going to have to come up with a way to secure the wire onto here. That might be another night. I just want to turn it on and go. Ta da! <laughs> My driver is MI. Sure, I'm sitting right.
things that make you want to go hmm. I really like this body, but I also hate it. Yeah, love-hate relationships are always fun. By God, I think I got it. It's a miracle. see if I can't connect that Let's see how it looks and then that's kind of there's a way to hide all these cables need a bigger table you know uh, what if there, I think there might actually be a red electrical tape. So you might, uh, you might be able to get yourself some of that and, you know, cover that up with. Yeah. How do I connect that without scratching my body? <laughs> right nope almost looks a heck of a lot better with lights on now let me turn off my big lights my rig has lights now oh, that's much better let me turn off the other light. Put us in complete darkness.
light a light kit just makes such a difference. Mm. Now it actually. Make it so much nicer. I'm happy. I think it looks pretty good. Do you have blinkers? I gotta change my tires, put better tires in the, the stock ones. I, I find these tires just too small for the truck. Yeah, I was gonna say it, it definitely looks like a uh, a more road truck than than an off road truck. Yeah. Well, it, it is, and it's not meant to be rock crawling. It's more of a trail truck. Yeah. It, um, I do think the tires do fit it, though, if it was like a, a pure on-road, though. I would put the suspension a little lower, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kind of gives it that uh, that kind of a, a slight Model T look to it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to uh, find a, a nice light bar. Or something, maybe a light bar in the front here. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I don't know if I'm going to write this at night. Yeah, you know, I, I want to keep it clean as much as possible. I already went in the mud with it in the dirt. Mud and dirt is okay, but I don't want to scratch it up too much. I don't want to treat it too much like a shelf queen, but I do want to use it. But I don't want to wreck it like I did my TF2. Ouch. My TF2, I was kind of rough on that thing. Yeah, with the uh, both my dad and I, we have uh, both FTX10s, or not FTX10, sorry. I don't know why I said that. Um, the ECX Torments, they're okay. the original body. I don't even have the original body for mine. That's how trashed up it was. Hmm. My my dad managed to save his using a bunch of duct tape, though. <laughs> and you know he drew he drove his a lot less. Here's my drifter I was working on last night. Mm. What all did you do? I installed a new speed control. Oh. The one I installed was a, I wanted the cheapest one, but I put the XR10 speed controller. It's a 60 amp. So four of the drifters should be big, in, uh, big enough. I think it was like $60 Canadian, which might be okay. 50 or 45 bucks US. Yeah, that's pretty good. So it's got it's got a brushed uh, brushless motor, but it's not a censored motor. Okay. But man, does this thing have a lot of weights? The guy that had it before had it uh, pretty much calibrated. He said it, it it's a four wheel drive, but uh, he's got lots of weights in the front and uh, lots at the back. But it's a nice little nice little rig. But like it's 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 mint. Like there's no scratch on the bottom. It's it's. Ooh. The, the tires had no scratch on it. Uh, I think I put more scratches on the table here last night when I was trying to go go forward and reverse on the try on the table, just trying to make it spin here. Um, but uh, it's kind of cool. Yeah. But I got this as a roller, pretty cheap. So I put my own little servo on, and I put my own motor, and now uh, it's actually my son. So I told him it's for you, Sebastian, but I'm probably going to end up playing more with it. <laughs> yeah, if I ever got an on-road car, it'd probably be one of those uh, those eight-scale kind of uh, typically. They, put, uh, they were the first versions of uh, RC cars, but, you know, they had the kind of smooth body to them. 
definitely like speedster cars didn't turn very well. Cool. Oh, I just noticed Days and Confused was on, looking at us, and he said uh, there was a nice, uh, it was a nice color. So I think he was talking about the car when we were talking about the color, maybe. Yeah. Or unless it's this car, I don't know, because I just noticed the comment and it doesn't show the time that it was actually commented on. Here, I'll look at it. Give me a second. One. <laughs> so I'm going to Toronto tomorrow for three days. Well, actually, sleep there two days. So in the hotel, I'm thinking I'm going to be bringing this, this guy in the hotel, and I'm going to do some drifting in the corridors. Ooh. I have a little suction cup. I'm going to try putting a, a camera here on the roof and just videotape while I'm going down the hallway. Hopefully, I won't get kicked out. They yeah. catch me and they don't like it. I guess they'll tell me. And then I'll say, oh, sorry, so sorry. Probably try drifting all the way up to the pool or something. Mm. Don't, uh, don't fall in. <laughs> Yeah, because this thing is not waterproof. Oh, then. Ooh, and I'm thinking of bringing a, a, a crawler. So I don't know which one to bring yet. Um, is there going to be like, uh, are there going to be rocks and such? Well, they're on the way there, there's a couple guys I know in Toronto. Um, there's a place that used to be open, but I think it's closed now. But I'll have to check tomorrow, see if it's open. Um, so uh, there's a couple guys I know. So on the way there, I can actually stop there and, and see them and say hello. And uh, Why not bring both? They got a couple nice spots to crawl over there. Let me bring the camera back up. There we go. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, appreciate uh, you uh, supporting me. Um, I got a lot of subscribers now. I'm going to try to come up with more videos. Uh, I got a couple other ones on the queue, and uh, I just have to render them uh, and post them. Uh, a couple nice ones, especially uh, my backyard course that I had. Uh, I had an event here with GCM Racing. Um, it's edited. I just have to render it. But I did it more like a documentary more than anything. As, as I'm walking around, I'm talking to people. I wanted to show the, not just cars crawling, more the people enjoying themselves doing this. It's, it's, it's about going to these events. It's about the people and chit-chatting, talking, and having fun, and trying to out-drive your buddy. So um, that's what I tried to do. Uh, with this little video. So me walking around with the camera and chit-chatting with people. So hopefully you'll see that one soon. Give me a thumbs up and uh, tell me why you liked it. And if you give me a thumbs down, that's okay also. I take those. Uh, but let me know why. Oh, somebody. Oh, thanks. I enjoyed the live stream. Breaking silence. No problem. Thank you. Oh, Daisy Confused is still there. And he says it's a nice color for the Toyota. Thank you, guys. And uh, we'll see you on the flip side. And uh, if you guys want more of these uh, live stream, let me know. And if you want me to work on something or if you want questions on something for me to do, I can actually do it. And uh, Cappy, if you want to stay on a little longer, we can chit chat right after I go off air. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll talk to you next time.